All right, so let's make this car do some things. I have a picture of a car. Uh, you know what, I gotta make sure that my project settings are right. So let's do 1080p. Do, do, do. We're gonna shrink down this car and because it's got like a whitish sort of shadow, why not just make it a white background? Hmm. Yeah, there we go, I like that better. All right, oh, what have I done? You get to see the flubs. All right, there's that, we're good here. We've picked, we've applied, life is good, we have our car. So, um, I have this car element on my timeline here. Um, and how do I want to do this? You know what, let's do a fade. So I'm going to go into my transitions, and we are going to add a fade. I'm going to add probably a fade on both sides, so I just drag it right to the middle here. But we want to make it really short. Um, I'm assuming that your intro is probably around two seconds long. So I'm going to shrink that down, one, two, yoink, and you might learn some other fringe benefits along the way, which is kind of nice. So two frames in five seconds. If I hit the comma key, I can move it frame by frame, so comma turns it into four, three, two, one, exactly two seconds. So now I'm going to use that to snap it. Um, I'm going to shorten up this transition, click one side, control click the other, and I can just drag these to make them really short. 10 is a pretty good transition, I think. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, just pops on nice and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a custom animation to this. I can either go to animations, animations, and drag custom here, but uh, you probably ought to learn this now because I use custom animations almost exclusively. Zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold shift and press A, and that creates a custom animation. So what this custom animation does is it has two keyframes. It has an ending frame and a beginning frame. Um, so basically what happens is, is you set your beginning frame and then you set your end frame and the animation takes care of all the stuff in between. So I'm gonna, but make sure you're on the right one. If I click the end one, Rudolph's red nose lights up. And if I click the beginning one, uh, that one doesn't light up, I wish it did. Uh, but this one is no longer um, lit up, so you know you're not at the end. Uh, so. And also, too, it doesn't matter where this animation is right now. I'm just interested in setting the keyframes. So I like this car here. Cool. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to take it a step back. All that information is important, but I'm going to take it one step back. I'm going to click this, and I know it's selected because it's yellow. Not selected is turquoise. So select, delete. Uh, and let's have the car start slightly off the stage, I think, is what I want. And then now I'm going to add my custom animation. So when I add my custom, the reason I did that is I'm going to set my starting position and when I set my custom animation like that, the beginning keyframe and the ending keyframe are essentially the same. Now what I'm going to do is now that I have my ending keyframe selected, I want this to just mm, seamlessly got, glide across the screen. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm only going to adjust the X value. Uh, I want the Y value to still st stay minus 361.1 or whatever it originally is at. So what I can do is I'm going to copy this value, so just copy it or control C. I'm going to drag my car across, mind you, uh, this is still selected, and you can see as I move the car, Rudolph's red nose is going to kind of pulsate and light up. It means that things are going on. So luckily this is already snapped, so the Y value is not changing, but if it did, I would probably go in here and just repaste that value so I don't forget it. And now what we can do is we can drag these keyframes to the very beginning and the very end of this clip so the fades and the animations happen at the same time. So let's see what that looks like. So when I hit play, we're going to fade in, drive, and fade out. I don't like... The, the thing about these types of animations is, uh, by default, they sort of ramp up and like ramp down. And that's cool for certain things. It's really like easy on the eyes to not just zoom right by, but there are some in, there are some instances where I do, and that's the case. And I'll, I'll drag this out a little bit to show you what I mean. You'll see that it slowly starts and then consistently goes and then slowly comes to a halt, like a car normally would. But in this case, I just want the car to zip across the screen and fade in. So I'm going to right-click the animation, go to Enable Easing, and Auto is pretty much the same as Exponential In and Out. Like, I don't know why there's an auto because it pretty much always defaults to this. In this case, I just want to go linear. I just want it to be at a consistent speed from start to finish. So I'm going to drag this all the way back to the beginning. Let's move this back farther than it needs to be. 
reposition myself at 2. I'm at 202, so comma, comma. Same thing with period if you want to move forward. So comma and period will nudge you frame by frame. Snap this, drag it out, start from the beginning, and you. We may, yeah, I think that's good. Actually, you know, let me drag this a little bit just to give it a little bit of white space. I don't know, I think maybe having it all the way pressed up at the beginning of the timeline might be playing tricks on my eyes. Let me see. Yeah, I kind of like that. All right, cool. So that's how you do it. And if you need to extend this by another second, you know, you can just simply drag this out to make it three seconds, four seconds, whatever you need. Uh, and then just do the same thing with the animations. Now you have a longer, you know, just a nice little cruising car. And that's it. That's how you do it.